What happened to you beyond the wall? I became the three-eyed raven. Oh. I don't know what that means. Game of Thrones Season 7 was fantastic, but bittersweet. If you are not caught up, please close out now. Tyrion came up with the idea of bringing a white down to Cersei in order to prove that the dead army is real and unify the living against the dead. So John and Co. proactively went north of the wall to kidnap a white and eventually mutilate it down in King's Landing. But what did they gain from this? Little did they know, not much. They gained Jaime Lannister, finally. But the Night King obtained Viserion and has now crossed the wall for the first time ever. It's a moot point, but worth asking ourselves. If John and Co. had just stayed south of the Wall, could the Night King have ever passed? Maybe not. It's wild that no one thought about the Night King possibly raising Viserion from the dead. What dummies! They definitely should have kept Danny, Drogon, and Rhaegal up at the Wall. For all we know, the Night King may have been able to see through the eyes and ears of the White down in King's Landing, and he may have known that the other two dragons were far south, that the Wall was undefended in a sense. A Song of Ice and Fire is a story that dates back thousands and thousands of years, the oldest history and lore that we know of tells tales of the first men tearing down the forest and killing the children of the forest. And one of the biggest themes this season was breaking the wheel, creating a new and better world for the children of the future. Yet even Bran, who is arguably the most powerful human alive, is still blinded by the past. He's the heir to the Iron Throne. Really, Bran? Worst three-eyed raven ever. That goes against everything that Jon stands for. He was named King of the North despite being a bastard because his bravery, selflessness, honor, and forgiveness represented something new and powerful, something real. It didn't matter that he was a bastard. I hope and expect John to refuse a name change, because it's just a name. All children are born equal. Although historically, they have not been treated that way, in the New World, assuming that the humans win the war or finally speak to the Night King and agree to peace, we can hope that cripples, bastards, and broken things are no longer looked down upon. Speaking of children, Cersei is pregnant, and Danny might get pregnant, both of which have complications. The king will have 20 children, and you will have three. And she already had three children. And Mary Mazdor implied that Danny will not ever be able to have a child again. But I'm starting to believe that prophecies can be broken. He would have been the stallion who mounts the world. Now he will burn no cities. Now his Halasar will trample no nations into dust. If people leverage powers older and stronger than hatred, just like Danny did when she hatched the dragons, namely, love. Rhaegar sends Doom, then he married Lyanna, for love, and it cost thousands of lives since they kept it a secret. But if Jon Snow helps to prevent the Doom, then it may have been worth it, depending on who you ask. It still sucks for all the lowborn who died fighting Robert's rebellion. Sansa had an impressive season. She outplayed arguably the best player in the Game of Thrones. You murdered our aunt, Lysa Arryn. You pushed her through the moon door and watched her fall, do you deny it? Earlier, you conspired to murder John Arryn. You gave Lysa tears of lease to poison him. Do you deny it? You gave me those drops and told me to pour them into John's wine, my husband's wine. You had Aunt Lysa send a letter to our parents telling her it was the Lannisters. Telling them it was the Lannisters who murdered John Arryn when really it was you. The conflict between the Starks and the Lannisters, it was you who started it. Do you deny it? You conspired with Cersei Lannister and Joffrey Baratheon to betray our father, Ned Stark. Thanks to your treachery, he was imprisoned and later executed on false charges of treason. Do you deny it? None of you were there to see what happened. None of you knows the truth. You held a knife to his throat. You told our mother this knife belonged to Tyrion Lannister. But that was another one of your lies. It was yours. Thank you, Sansa. I have known you since you were a girl. I've protected you. Protected me? By selling me to the Boltons? I'm a little disappointed, though, that she didn't swing the sword herself. I'm just the executioner. You pass the sentence. But that scene was great overall. So where do we go from here? They laid the groundwork for a few things. Melisandre suggested that she still has a role to play, so she'll be back. That she'll die in Westeros. Oh, I will return, dear spider. One last time. My lady. I have to die in this strange country. Just like you. Maybe that's what the voice in the flames told him way back in the day. The Hound will probably reunite with the Stark girls. Theon will attempt to rescue Yara. 
and Cersei is hiring the Golden Company, but does not intend to use them in the War vs. the Dead Army. So this could go two ways. Maybe the War vs. the Dead Army will be wrapped up in the first half of Season 8 up north, and the second half will be the humans unfortunately warring against themselves once again in this never-ending Game of Thrones. Or another option is that the humans are forced to retreat down south, maybe all the way to King's Landing, or even further. Maybe even to Dorn, which kind of sounds like Dawn. Dorn, 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 Dawn, Dawn. <laughs> Where John may pick up the legendary sword called Dawn. But fan fiction aside, the biggest outstanding question is, what books did Sam steal from the Citadel? And what will they help people learn about the past in order to change the future and avoid the doom that Rhaegar seemed to sense many years ago?